Well, we're back here again today on a Friday with Mark Collinsworth of uh, Veer Global, asset manager at that corporation. And uh, Mark, in Wall Street wrap for this week, we're going to be wrapping a lot about the coronavirus, its effect on what happened this week and what's ahead. Now, you're saying, as you predicted last week, that we would soon see a glimmering of a light at the end of the tunnel. Is this the beginning now of a bottom or a turnaround? Um, well, bottoming, we're, we're kind of in a bottoming process. So based on, you know, selling pressure of the day, we did, for, believe it or not, today was actually the first day we actually saw some panic selling come into the market. And usually a bottoming process, the market hit a bottom, you'll see some rallies up, some more sell-offs. We may even come down and it may actually even break the low that we set today. So actually today didn't end up too badly considering the plunges earlier in the week. Correct. Um, the, the NASDAQ actually finished in positive territory today, and we actually went from being down over 1,000 points on the Dow and over 100 points on the S&P to only finishing down uh, 24 on the S&P and only 357 points on the Dow Jones. So again, what does that indicate to you of what's ahead from here on in? Well, the, the long story short, the stock market is trying to price in a global slowdown from the coronavirus. So if we don't get that slowdown in the next three or six months, of course, the stock market will rally because it didn't, it, it made the wrong prediction. Based on the information the stock market has currently. Now, of course, this being the weekend, we're going to see, of course, you know, there's going to be more outbreaks of the coronavirus here in the United States, overseas and so forth. And come Monday morning, the stock market will have to make an assessment. Did it make the right prediction on what's happening for the next three or six months or will it have to reassess? But based on the selling pressure a day, a lot of selling actually hit the market today. So for this leg down, I think we're fairly close to a bottom, at least here in the short term. Okay, now apparently at least some people, including yourself, say that the appearances in China that it is being contained and that may portend good things globally, but yet it could be just beginning here in the U.S. and in Europe and in other countries. So are we necessarily out of the woods? Unfortunately, we're not. Um, just this afternoon, uh, the United States actually announced there was 12 new cases here in the United States. Um, if you look at China, uh, the coronavirus actually broke out originally in China in December. It, they actually went from December until about uh, the end of January, beginning of February, until they actually started putting a quarantine process in effect that would actually work. So right now, we are basically where China was four weeks ago. We're going to see an increase in, in, in new cases and things like that, but we're also jumping ahead of quarantine faster than what the Chinese did. So I think in about four to five weeks, you will see an increase, but it should start to level out after that. Now, uh, there are some uh, indications that the Federal Reserve may act, and there's a, a former Fed uh, governor uh, by uh, the name of um, Walsh, uh, Kevin Warsh, who is uh, saying that it would be a, a good thing if the uh, Fed and uh, other central banks around the globe acted in a coordinated fashion and maybe they should make an announcement as soon as this Sunday. Uh, what about that approach? Is that kind of thing necessary? Um, I think I think it should be just because the U.S. economy is based so much on the stock market these days. Uh, people see their 401k plans go up. They feel like spending more money. So I do believe the Fed should take some kind of step. If you look at China, China actually took steps with their central bank earlier this week. Their stock markets only lost about 8 percent compared to about 13 percent for our markets. Well, do you expect the U.S. Federal Reserve and also the other uh, central banks to get together uh, as soon as this Sunday and act in a coordinated way to announce uh, some kind of remedy? Um, I don't know if they will actually do a remedy. Usually what the Fed likes to do first, the Fed likes to talk about it, or our central banks in general like to talk about it. That's one of the weapons in their arsenal is talking about it first. And then once they've exhausted talking about it, that's when they actually take actual steps to actually cut rates or increase liquidity to the markets. Will it need a coordinated effort among uh, all the banks uh, globally? I think what they need to do right now is just reassure people that they are willing to step in. And if that doesn't work, then go in and actually add liquidity, either buy bonds, uh, do a QE program, or actually cut rates. Do you expect the U.S. Fed to cut rates substantially? Well, if you're curious on that, this time last week, based on what's, ca what's called the Fed Funds Futures, it's actually a way that people can actually make a bet on where the Fed Funds Futures are going to be at in the next, you know, 
uh, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 180 days out. This time last week, there's only about a 20% chance the Federal Reserve would cut interest rates at their March 17th meeting. As of today, there is like those Fed funds futures are actually predicting a 100% chance of a 25 basis cut at the at the March 17th meeting, a 80% chance of an additional cut at the June meeting, and a 75% chance cut at the September meeting. Do you expect them to act perhaps even before the first meeting, the March 17th meeting? I don't think they will because if they if they do something out of the norm, that basically will send a message to the markets that the Federal Reserve is starting to panic on the effects that the coronavirus will have on the economy. I think the best move the Fed can do is just reassure people at this point and then try to wait until the actual meeting and then actually announce a cut there. Uh, with your own clients, uh, what advice are you giving them to uh, what should they do now while this is all still in flux? Um, I would take, you know, if you have any extra cash, we did this today for some of our clients. We actually went and started nibbling on some stocks in the market. Um, I wouldn't panic on this. Um, the market normally sells off like this 12, 13 percent. This is a very normal correction. We were, we, we've gone for quite a while without a correction of this magnitude, so we actually needed it. And um, I think right now the best thing to do is just remain calm because based on history, when you get these 10 to 12, 13 percent sell offs, yeah, it doesn't feel good, but if you just, remain calm and hold on historically 12 months after you get that 12 percent sell-off on average the stock market is 20 percent higher from that point of course mark the big difference here is that the sell-off was so rapid correct this would actually set a set a historical record historically when you get those 12 to 15 percent sell-offs those sell-offs occur over the matter of six to eight weeks we actually got the full 12 percent in five days but you say it's still going to even out in the end. The fact that it was such a rapid decline does not indicate anything that will be dire on a permanent basis. Well, correct. I think a, a lot of the decline occurred because it was kind of a surprise. Like I was saying, this, the coronavirus actually broke out in China in December, and the Chinese didn't really do anything or actually take serious steps towards it until the beginning of February. So this kind of jumped up and kind of surprised the market a little bit. And then you add to that, the CDC and the, the World Health Organization is basically coming out trying to scare people. Uh, they're scaring people because they don't really know what this virus can do. So by scaring people, it makes people be more aware, more cautious, makes people wash their hands more. Because what the CDC does not want to happen is they don't want this to get into the population, have it infect, you know, 100 to 200,000 people. And this be like something like Mears was several years ago. Even though Mears only affected a few thousand people, it did carry a 25 to 30 percent morality rate. Well, some of the um, um, uh, some of the biggest hits were in, in tech stocks. Now, you're saying that um, you're advising buying some tech stocks at this point. Correct. Uh, like today, a lot of your tech stocks actually finished the day positive. Uh, Microsoft, Shop Ify, um, Amerinex, um, Billing.com, those companies finished positive. Uh, a part of that was they were a little bit harder hit in the beginning of the week because those were the, the strongest performers up until up until Monday. Most of those stocks were already up, you know, 20, 25 percent on the year. So it just made sense that investors would want to take profits where they had the profits to take them from. You know, there's some financial analysts who say that. Uh the coronavirus might have accelerated a bit, might have worsened it, but actually we're in a global slowdown now, which will get worse over the next year. So therefore, globally and in the U.S., we could expect a deep correction, maybe even a, a, a recession, a mild recession, a severe recession, and some predicting are even worse into another, another depression. That's what, they're, that's what some analysts are saying is ahead of us. What do you think? I think that's probably an over exaggeration at this point. Um, you know, we've already had we've had SARS, we've had MERS. Uh, the stock market in both those cases sold off roughly 12 to 13 percent, and of course the the CDC and the WHO actually got it under control within four to five weeks. I think you're going to see the same scenario play out here. Now you will see a slowdown in the global economy. There's really no way to avoid that, but that's where it's going to require the Fed to actually come in and cut interest rates sooner rather than later. So if the Fed acts sooner rather than later, uh, despite the global slowdown, we should weather that fairly well and people who have investments should do all right. 
They should. And you got to remember, the stock market is already predicting from the sell-off, is already predicting a slowdown already. So that's already priced into the markets. If the situation turns out to be worse than a slowdown and actually turns into a recession, then you can see another leg down in the stock market. But hopefully the Fed's going to play it safe and actually cut rates at the March meeting. Okay, Mark, wrapping up now, again, uh, in a nutshell, what is your advice to investors now who are quite jittery about what's going on? What should they do? Well, after doing this for 30 years, I feel kind of like it's like Groundhog Day. I've just seen this happen so many times over and over again. You, you have these, you know, 12, 13, 14% sell-offs. Clients panic. They want to get out of the market. And then six months to 12 months down the road, they're kicking themselves because they should have been buying versus selling. So. That's my advice. Remain calm. All right. Mike uh, Collinsworth of uh, Vera Global wrapping with us once again in this week's Wall Street Wrap. Thanks for being with us, Mark. Oh, thank you.